Good day and welcome to another edition of uh, Literature and Arts. Today we'll be discussing not novel this time, but a fantastic movie that is getting so much attention in Nigeria and by extension the rest of the world. The film is titled She Must Be Obeyed by Funke Akindele. This edition will be, the topic is Parenting Lessons from Funke Akindele's She Must Be Obeyed. Parenting Lessons from Funke Akindele's She Must Be Obeyed. The novel uh, was released in September 2003 and been, been getting so much attention and reviews because of the fantastic plotline and very interesting themes that it deals with. And today we'll be looking at one of the very important themes that that uh, film deals with, and that is parenting. The impact and the influence of parenting on a child. And to adequately do that, I will employ Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. Don't mind the big grammar. <laughs> psychoanalysis. One thing about literature is that literature, I call it a jack of all trade and a master of all. In the sense that literature borrows from almost every field of study, particularly in the social sciences. So the psychoanalysis that we'll be using to analyze the character the main character Shinyobola she in this um, film is a theory uh, in the social sciences um, psychology to be precise it will help us to un unravel the unconscious motivation of the character because the character the protagonist of this um, of this uh, film she is a female music star very popular very influential and very successful but despite her success she is uh, uh, the nickname for ashinyobola is she and that's what she's called all through the film she is depicted as a very wicked character she is uh, extremely ambitious and uh, she is also very insecure emotionally insecure those three things I will explain she's wicked she's uh, 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 extremely uh, ambitious and also emotionally insecure in the film uh, she is depicted as somebody who is very wicked and our wickedness comes from our desire for our extreme ambition. So both are working side by side. We could see because of our extreme ambition to be successful, she will stop at nothing to become the best. In the film, she is uh, one of the three, she is one of the three uh, female popular music stars in that film the three of them are the rave of the moment in the music industry in fact one of them won the best music uh the music artist of the year but one thing about she is that she never wants she always wants to be the best she always wants to uh, outshine the other two uh, contemporaries you know and you know, it's not a bad desire to want to, to want to be best, but this most times she does even uh, whatever it will take. In achieving her goal, she wants to pull down the rest so that she will be the only one. You know, the one the lady who won the music star of the year, she sets her up paid a guy to start having relationship with her and then have sex with her 
because it was stage managed it was planned camera was put in that room where um, the guy had sex with the female star and then she she put this uh, video that is a sex video on the social media just in a bid to pull that successful female artist down so that she will be the number one she wants to destroy her career that's one of how that is one of the things she can go or do to achieve a success another thing that depicts her as very wicked is the fact that she never pays all her, her those who work for her she earns money she has wealth but she refuses to pay them despite the peanuts she pays them a salary for months she might refuse to pay them so she is extremely wicked and also she is a music star not because she could sing a young girl named Adeze goes to her um, she, she was there when this young girl Adeze was singing and then she the girl she had a contact with the Adeze who was singing and then they talked Adeze at that time was very desperate her father was very sick and she needed money to treat her father going into uh, millions tens of millions so uh, she uh, she offers to help her by giving her the money but with a condition the condition is that that Adeze will be the one singing in the studio and then the name what people will think is that it is those songs are produced by she so she is the one taking the glory taking the money why it is a day she takes to the studio to go and produce the song and then the clause that Ada is a sign to is that she um, that Ada is a will not go and perform anywhere again for the next 20 years so she gave Ada is a 20 million naira to go and take care of her father why a day is a sells ignorantly and uh, uh, gullibly sells <coughs> her right to sing to she so whenever uh, she wants to release a new song she takes her days to the studio her days produces the song and um, sings and then uh, it's released in the name of uh, she as if it's she that sings and you know all these their shows they play their song on the net while the person is just miming to it so can we see how desperate she is she's wicked she's extremely ambitious you know she doesn't it wouldn't cost her anything to kill anybody that stands in her way to success she's extremely wicked and as to being emotionally insecure we can see from the movie that uh she has hatred and dislike for people she perceives as better than her and whenever she sees such people her goal is to put them pull them down or either humiliate them you will see that in the uh, other female character uh, female music stars the other two she does everything to pull them down because she knows that she doesn't know how to sing the only thing is that she she's taking advantage of one a day so those ones know how to sing and they, they are the top of the game so she's hungry she uses every means to pull them down i told you one of the means by setting her up and uh, making a sex video a nude video to go viral also there's a girl a young lady that comes to work with her you know the girl when she got the job to be she's pa you know you know imagine somebody gets the opportunity to be davido's pa today he can't wait for that day to come when you will get to work so she got to work with her best clothes that day and she's a very beautiful lady but unfortunately see she is seeing how well dressed and beautiful she was so intimidated and insecure to the point that she told the lady to go inside and go and get 
to go and get a better clothes and of course the better clothes is to go and get a clothes that looks more like an old woman clothes so she's agitated whenever she sees somebody who is perhaps better than her in one way probably in beauty or in intelligence and then she's looking for a way to humiliate the person so as to get to maintain a facade of strength and uh, confidence so the question is why would somebody be like this wicked extremely ambitious Our ambition is to another level Our ambition comes with desperation so what will make a character be like this everybody is a product of influence it is much later as the no, as the film progresses that we actually found out what is the cause of this uh, very deadly trait in the life of she there was a scene where she was uh, received a call and the person behind uh, in the other side of the call was her mother her mother was weeping crying and begging she that my daughter what have i done to you i have been sick and you have not even come to check me you can you have money and you have refused to give me to get myself treated please she uh, your what have i done and without saying a word she cuts the call so what comes to the mind of the audience watching such, uh, such a character is that why is this girl so wicked? She's not only wicked to outsider, she's also wicked to her own mother. And you know, the mother is even unconscious of whatever wrong she must have done to warrant such neglect. So what happens? After that event, uh, there was a flashback. Uh, she remembers when she was young probably four uh, maybe six or seven years old where she was preparing for a school in the house spot it was there we discovered that she has a disease called apolicia apolicia is a disease where someone has very it's a disease that happens that removes the major part of a person's hair such that the person has very scanty hair on the head if a man still has that it's understandable but when a woman has that it really dampens her self-esteem because you know that women's beauty is tied to uh, a woman's beauty is tied to her hair and that's why they pay they spend hours in the hairdressing salon because of how important the how much they the 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 um, they consider their hair as being important to their beauty this girl suffers from apolicia and her hair is very scanty you know naturally she will have that self-esteem uh, low self-esteem that her hair is poor is bad but her mother complicates the issue she started insulting her you know she was preparing for the inter-house spot and her mother said it's not your kind that they are looking for in the inter-house spot you know look at your hair look at your younger sister's hair your son younger sister's hair is even better than yours look at how much uh, look at how you look and such embarrassment and i'm sure it is not only that time it must have happened throughout our growing up stage no they just showed us that scene to show us where the problem started from. So, uh, she grew up being, you know, from the least, you know, is your parent, it's from the parent that the child should get self-esteem. Even if the whole world is abusing you, you should get uh, self-esteem from your parent. But rather, it is she's mom that is even pulling her down insulting and abusing her making her see herself as inferior to others making her, her see herself as inadequate and then begins that is where she loses self-esteem 
So we can now understand where all those attributes are coming from. Remember, we are using psychoanalysis. And in psychoanalysis, you, we try to uncover the motivation, the unconscious motivation for action. So this is where others, I mean, sorry, uh, she's unconscious motivation for those actions come from. She was, she grew with low self-esteem. She grows, she grew up feeling inferior to others. So as a means to fight that low self-esteem, as a means to prove a point, she feels one of the ways to fight that low esteem is by being successful. And that's why she would do anything, no matter the cost, to be successful. Because she believes once she's successful, it will compensate for her, for her lack, which is the apolicia she has. It will compensate for the pain she has suffered all through her life. So success for her was a means to prove a point to her mother. That you used to tell me that I'm not meant for this. I'm not qualified for this because I have a disease. Now I'm going to prove it to you. That where those people you were comparing me are not able to get to, I'm going to get there. So she was trying, you know, in that uh, call, her mother was feeling, what have I done to end this kind of treatment that you are giving me? You have absolutely abandoned me. Her mother was just thinking that, oh, I sent you to good school. Oh, I, I fed you. But that's not enough. She didn't know that the words she spoke to her child made more impact on the child than the school she sent her to. More than the food and the gift she bought for her. So our words as parents has a long way to shape not just the present but the future of our child. In fact, you may even be saying the reality. Of course, the reality is that she, her hair is not good enough to be presented outside. But the point is, a child needs is or her self-esteem to be built. Normally, because of that disease, she knows that she has an inadequacy. She's inadequate. But you don't push it before her eyes. You know, through history, we can see people like Ben Carson, who, were, who had one form of challenge or the other. Academical challenge was for Ben Carson. But their mother always told them that they were the best. Their mother always told them, the cousin and the brother, that they could become whatever they wanted to be. That same Ben Carson, who, had, who obviously had academic challenges, but because the mother was seeing positive words and building his self-esteem, she brought out the giant in him. That same young boy grows to become one of the greatest neurosurgeons in the world. Probably if she's mother has told her that she, uh, she Obola, oh, you are beautiful. Even when it was obvious that she's not. It would change her perspective. She grew up to wanting to prove a point because of her growing up. So, the trauma she suffered in childhood affected her psychological development. So the trauma she suffered in childhood became the unconscious motivation for her action. So whenever she sees somebody who is better than her, it always reminds her of that feeling she used to have when she was younger. So she doesn't want to have that feeling again, that feeling of being inferior. So her next response are unconscious she's not conscious about it but her unconscious response is to try to humiliate the person so she can uh, so she can uh, present a facade of strength that no how, how do you mean do you think you are more than me no no so she wants to humiliate the person such that she will not feel inferior again so that she will not one of the things she fears most is to experience that childhood trauma again. So she would do anything not to experience that self, low self-esteem. She would do anything to, to repress 
and suppress those around her that seems better than her because she always she, she doesn't want to experience that feeling that she had in her childhood you know there, there, there was a scene where she went to visit uh, uh when she went to a pr office where they do pr for her and then the lady they just employed she was speaking in american accent immediately because the lady was speaking better than her immediately she was agitated yes have you traveled out before the lady said no then why are you speaking american accent what is the meaning of that you know whenever she senses that somebody is better than her it raises she's she's agitated so you want me to feel less than you who do you think you are and so on like that as a result of that it brings out those terrible character traits in her she does more terrible things in the film just to maintain just to prove a point just as a form of defense against being of being inferior why because of what happened in her childhood so as parents we must be conscious of the words we speak because the word we speak the gift you give them they may forget but the impact you make on their personality has a long way the way you you view them because whatever perspective they will have of themselves it is first created by the parents even if the world says they are very foolish they are waiting for your own response their own your own response will determine what they will think about themselves so the psychology of she was tampered with from her childhood so it will take a lot of psychological treatment to make her balance again so this is a lesson to parents the purpose of this uh, broadcast is to pass this message to parents as wonderful as that movie is is to tell you that you have a long way to go in parenting is not just about giving back to children parenting is building a child self-esteem so that when the child gets into the world whatever anybody says will not matter i know what my daddy told me i know what my mom told me you know the teachers of ben carson they gave up on him they said all manner of things but the mother kept pumping confidence into him kept pumping hope into him kept pumping belief into him and we can see what it became thank you for watching this broadcast today I assure you that next week will come with a better episode. As parents, always show that you believe in your child. God bless you. Thank you.